through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 242. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of April 2nd. My AKA, birthday. Yeah. Woo! Your birthday. Woo. Happy 32 birthday. years young. Hey. Kind of an appropriate birthday uh, yeah. considering what's coming out. Or Not at least some of it. Too shabby. Yeah. Some of it appropriate. Some of it creepily appropriate maybe 16 years ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. We'll see what the future holds. Uh, we're going to start with the big one of the week. Kablooey. Which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 1. Yes. Pack that they've been talking about. Yeah, it was supposed forever. to come out in like August, I yeah, think, originally. originally. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they just meant to leak concept art and then they decided to scale uh, it back. I, or I also think there somebody had created that like fictional, like was it a uh, flying? Uh, yeah, the little box shield ca yeah, carrier exactly. box set. And so I think that really sort of inspired a lot of people to be like, oh my god, could it be all in one? Especially since it's coming from different companies and yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Um, so they finally were able to put it all together. Finally. And um, what it is, it's let's see, it's got uh, Avengers, Captain America, Thor, both Iron Mans, the Incredible Hulk. Uh, Norton? Yeah, it's the Norton one, right? Incredible Hulk? Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. And they're all Blu-ray, if I remember uh, correctly? All Blu-ray and Blu-ray 3D for those that are available in Blu-ray 3D. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, and then Cole includes all the special features that all of those uh, originally came out with. So Good. covering that basic. Not uh, stiffing you on that. Nope. Additionally, there is a top secret bonus disc, Ooh. which is uh, filled with never before seen deleted scenes, extended scenes. Never before seen. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's the thing that sort of killed me. I was like, really? Like, you didn't put those on the other ones? Like, what's the point of those special releases? It's going to be like one per movie, the like one that they just it's, said. <laughs> it's a, it looked like a handful, yeah. It looked like not too many. Um, it's also got some pre-visualization stuff, some animatics. Um, Agent Coulson intros, which is kind of cool. We love the Coles. And there's a, uh, and then the shawarma after featurette. Mm. Uh, so yeah, they got that going for it. Uh, additionally, there's supposed to be some phase two teaser stuff, like Ooh. teaser footage, concept art, and Easter eggs. Mm. So they got going for it. Maybe the Ant-Man Comic-Con footage that they were showing. Yes. Uh, plus, it complete comes with a uh, complete glowing tesseract. Ooh, look at that! So, so that's that's something for you. So, if you're a person who hates your DVD shelves and doesn't like anything to fit normally, this yes. will be perfect for you. It'll fit with your Transformers triangular box set yes, and your exactly. Walking Dead stabbed eye yeah, exactly. zombie head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it comes with ten discs though, so it's it's a pretty hefty pack. And for six movies, yeah. yeah. Uh, retail price of two nineteen, but you can get it on Amazon for one fifty for those who are bargain hunters. Not so, horrible, not yeah. great, but not horrible. Yeah, so I I, th I think it's pretty good. If you don't yeah. own like all of them already, exactly. yeah. this is what you get. But if you own like all of them already, like why not just wait till your friend gets in and then jack his top secret disc or uh -huh, something like uh -huh. that. So, I mean, rent it from Scarecrow, yeah. Rent it. And steal their disc? No, I feel no, bad I mean, for them. No, I mean rent in general. Just yeah. rent it. Okay, yeah. yeah you can, <laughs> I don't know what that would be like to rent the like Tesseract case thing, but... Just a special disc, please. Yeah. Can I get a discount? 70 cents. They'd probably do that for you. I wouldn't be surprised. Moving Scarecrow's right pretty sweet. They do things. They are pretty sweet. Moving right along, though. Uh, one that's probably not the Greg edition no. of a release, but that is The Bible, the epic miniseries. Yes, which just finished, uh, this would be two, two days ago on Sunday, yes. on yes. Easter Sunday, mm -hmm. so it's like, man, they were talking about ready to release. Finish, release. Yeah, I mean, I guess... Gotta hit the Easter crowd, gotta get them Google Christians. Well, Guilt buys. I wish I could say that's not true, but no, I'm it's totally sure true. that is true. Yeah. Uh, this is produced by Roma Downing and Mark Burnett uh, of Survivor fame. Yep. I didn't realize he was as religious as he is, but apparently he's really religious. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of weird if you ever watch Survivor. Does, yeah. Does not feel like that's yeah. like a really good Christian yeah, he's show. he's an interesting individual. But nevertheless, you know, this is a sweeping epic miniseries. Ten part miniseries, I believe. Yes. Telling the major epic stories of the Bible. Which, I mean, you know, I guess if you want to think about it in terms of the context of like great fiction. <laughs> I wasn't going to say fiction, but great stories. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, Fictional it's stories. It's probably the <laughs> the first great 
book yeah, of it's stories true. all it's in true, one because you got things like Ten Commandments and stuff like that that have come out before. But Party those are usually the Red sea, usually those are like specifically with a religious bent or telling a specific chunk of the Bible. This is trying to be all encompassing. And whether you believe it or not, I mean, it is pretty grandiose stuff, you know. Yes. It's an interesting uh, story, to say, as you said. Party of the Red Sea, mm-hmm. the locusts, all sorts I of stuff. Apoc- like that. I think a revelation happens, Jesus coming back to life. Yes, all exactly. That. Yep, mm-hmm. it does. And that's part of what it has in terms of special features. This yes. stuff like the Bible, colon, creation, an emotional three part so journey emotional. through the making of the Bible, which includes part three, which is crucified and resurrected, a deeper look inside the emotional filming of the crucifixion, resurrection, the last days in Morocco, which, you know, I, I mean, I'm personally not particularly religious, but mm-hmm. I appreciate the significance of that yeah, in terms trying to of give it a little bit of depth. Well, not even just that. Whether you believe the mm-hmm. stories or not, it is a pretty significant event in the yes. history of the world. Like, yes. it has impacted the world. Whether the one best-selling book of all time. Not only that, but people have done a lot of different things in the name of religion. Yeah, so. like killed a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hate mail to Greg at mcguffinpodcast.com. Uh, also, you have Scory in the Bible, which... Mm-hmm. Looks at the soundtrack of the Bible, which, you know. God 17, <laughs> Devil 12. <laughs> you know, that'd, be, that'd be even better. I would have actually really liked that. But a scorecard I, for each book, yeah. who wins? <laughs> I didn't realize Hans Zimmer really? did the score of huh. this. So that's that's pretty impressive. Hans yeah. Zimmer's a pretty awesome yeah. composer. So uh, bravo. Present on day that. John Williams. Yeah. And also, also the, uh, let's see, the Bible colon visual effects. The Bible colon? Yeah, <laughs> uh, a montage of the striking visual effects that make the Bible the most highly or high quality biblical epic of all time. <laughs> I just want to toss a lot of like specific adjectives onto something I'm selling and be like, the most popular release on April third that Greg Thomas ever did in his career. Like, It'd be good. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's it's a, it's a little much, but at the same time, like if I were thinking about making oh, the yeah. Bible into a miniseries, like the visual effects are really probably yes. the most important thing. Yes. Like you know, Jesus sitting around me like, look, you know, <laughs> guys, he's yeah, a pretty important guy. You should listen to this guy. Eye for eye, like, tooth for tooth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no, you got to you got to see some smiting. Yeah. You got to see some like seas being yeah, parted. Elijah coming down. Exactly. Exactly. Fiery chariot burning bushes. You gotta, you gotta like see that. some being like crucified. Yeah. You know, this this is stuff that yeah. requires visual effects, mm-hmm. and so it's good it's that it has it. So. We need the flooding, we need the ark. That's what I'm saying. Yep. You know, gotta have a little Noah action. It'll be uh, the perfect storm Bible edition. I would I would probably watch that actually. <laughs> if it were as good as the perfect storm, that would okay, be pretty sweet. Yeah, Noah and everybody else yeah. dies and the world ends. It's that would a, be a twist. Just repurpose the perfect storm, like scrub all the names the out. The new M. Night Shyamalan t- movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Noah's not, Ark. We're not gonna, <laughs> not gonna go down that track. Um, let's move right along yes. to one that you had brought up, mm-hmm. which was, <laughs> I guess in some ways, kind of appropriate to follow up the last yeah. one with, and that is Dirk Gently. Um, yeah. Yes. The drama series from writer Douglas Adams mm-hmm. about a holistic detective. Yes. Um, <clears throat> his other series, it's his only other work that wasn't uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. He had two Dirk Gently books and a short story. But they were pretty much, well not his only, but as far as novels, his only real novelization that wasn't Douglas Adams. And this is brought to life by the BBC? Yes, yes. I don't know if it was very popular, because I don't think it's very I long. I think it was like BBC Four. Yeah, I, I think... four episodes. Yeah, I don't think it, unfortunately, did very well, but I'll still, I'm still excited to check it out, because, you know, being an American, I don't get BBC... Oh. Well, on BBC Four. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so... <laughs> I mean... I thought I'd be waiting years to, for this to show reruns on BBC America, which I do get. I mean, it's cool that it's... It's. I mean, it's. I guess it's a pretty traditional British series. It's yeah. four episodes, and the first book is pretty short. So if it's just the first book, well, it's about an hour per episode. Oh, okay. Um, unfortunately, no special features, which clearly probably speaks to how popular yeah. you're speaking of it is. Yeah. I think it originally came out almost a year ago. Yeah, it's been a while. England. Like they've been able to buy it since I believe last May. Yeah. So it's been really probably um, a tough. Release Shelved, here. maybe. Well, I, I mean, they probably weren't even going to do it. And yeah, finally, true. like uh, enough people. Are, they like, might have got a push them. from Douglas Adams' birthday a while back, and people probably. were like, "God, put it out!" On I me. bet. I bet that you're you're absolutely right there. So, I mean, take it for what you yeah. will. Uh, I guess thank you, Acorn Media. Yeah, it's going to have to be a small little company that puts <laughs> it all together. But I'll probably be writing it here at Scarecrow. Got to check it out. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Finally, we're going to end with a. Um, 
kind of a fun release. It's mm -hmm. been out for a while in terms yeah. of theatrical. It screened at South by Southwest yes. last year when mm -hmm. I was there, and that is John Dies at the End mm -hmm. from uh, director Don Coscarelli, yes. who was known for the Phantasm series. He mm -hmm. did Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. and he did Bubba Hotep. Which is nice. Yeah. Love me some Bubba Hotep. Uh, so it's about a new street drug that sends its users across time and dimensions, uh, but has one drawback. Some people return no longer human, and can two college dropouts save humankind from the silent, otherworldly invasion? Uh, should note the drug is soy sauce. Nice. So there's that. I seem to remember this being a uh, either a graphic novel or a uh, online novel mm -hmm. from a, yes. a, a, a David Wong, I believe the guy's name is. Or yes. And I, I seem to remember years ago being involved in the site that he actually, and he would post little bits of it, and then, so it's weird to like lose track of it and then he, find track of it hey, again. You know. Hitting theatrical release had it, Paul Giamatti in it. Did it did have Paul Giamatti. In fact, there's a uh, special feature on the Blu-ray of hmm. uh, the Fangoria interview with Paul Giamatti, and you know they take horror seriously, mm -hmm. so that would be pretty interesting. Yeah, it's, it, it got a variety of weird mixed reviews, kind of supposed to have weird visual effects I mean, or visual elements. Yeah, there's a, there's a what's it called a an, a special effects short mm. on it called. Uh, Creature Corpse, The Effects of Soy Sauce. Hmm. Uh, more interesting to me is that there is a commentary from writer-director Don Coscarelli, producer Brad uh, Baru, and actors Chase Williamson and Rob Mays. Nice. And also there is a making of featurette. So it's, it's a pretty cool. it's a pretty decently loaded mm -hmm. release for a smallerish film. Yeah, like indie-ish. I mean, it was at South by Southwest mm -hmm. last year. They had it at SIF uh, uh, last yes. year, and they brought Don Coscarelli out for Crypticon, cool. and then a uh, special screen of it at SIF. Oh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you I mean, and your it, money always getting people together. You know, it, it took a while <laughs> to get it out, uh, but Don Coscarelli is one of those sort of uh, cult mm -hmm. uh, horror directors, and you know, there's definitely going to be an audience for it, so yep. I'm glad it, it got out, and not only did it get out, but it had a decent release when it did. So We like that. Props Unlike to you for that. Gently, which yeah. is kind of barely came out. <laughs> hey, thank you Anchor Media for even getting that. Yeah, that's pro like, I want Third Watch to come out, and that was produced by NBC, and they're not even going to release the rest of that, probably. So They hate that tells you They do. I, I think NBC hates everybody, really. Well, I think that's probably... I don't want to get too hypey, but uh, that was one of my favorite shows of all time. That's Whoa. all I'm saying. Yeah, so. <laughs> that being said, uh, join us next time when we talk Danny Boyle in honor of the release of Trance. Mm -hmm. As always, we're at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number... 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on blip.tv. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some sticky badges. See? I got you doing yeah. that. Uh, leave us some reviews on iTunes. Comment on YouTubes. We like Give that. us the ups and the thumb downs and the subscribe thingies. All that good stuff. Right? Isn't that what they do? The thingies? I think they yeah. do the thingies. The thingies. And we'll see ya next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.